from that point on like i'm sorry i just couldn't stop i had to read the rest of those chapters <laughs> now he's like kinky dorian and manon's like that's not fenris <laughs> Hello, welcome back. It has been a while. I will be continuing with my read of the Frame of Glass series. So we have Tower of Dawn and Empire of Storms. I am doing the tandem read for these and I am about this much through each of the books. So I'm currently on chapter 14 of Empire of Storms and I am part way through chapter 9 of Tower of Dawn. So far in Tower of Dawn, Kale has gone down to, I have forgotten the name of the place, but he is with Irene now and Irene has agreed to treat his injuries. There's not a lot happened in this so far. My memory is a little bit hazy because there has been quite a gap between me starting these and continuing them. Empire Storms, I just had a quick flick through again to refresh my memory. Rowan went to collect Dorian after they found out that the witches were on the way to kill him. Manon helped Dorian escape but they know that she killed one of the yellow leg witches and so the punishment has just been announced by her grandmother and the punishment is that they intend to kill Astrahan. Which we're not happy about, okay? Elide is currently with Lorcan. Lorcan has been hunting Elide. He doesn't know that she has the other weird stone that he's looking for yet. That is pretty much where we're at with these. And I'm going to carry on with the tandem read and I will check in with you again when something interesting happens. Hello, hello. It is still the same day. Uh, I read a couple of chapters of... what did I read? I read a couple of chapters of Tower of Dawn uh, and then I got distracted. I went and cleaned the whole house. And then I had a shower, hence the change of clothes and wet hair. And I am switching over to Empire of Storms. So in Tower of Dawn we just had the scene, the library scene, where Irene finds someone dead in the library and she thinks she's being followed. Switching over to Empire of Storms now. So let's see what's going on in this one. Hello guys, it is Sunday morning. Uh, I am reading Tower of Dawn next. I got a little bit carried away yesterday reading Empire of Storms and I went further than I was supposed to. I was supposed to switch back to Tower of Dawn but I got distracted. So it was the part where Manon's grandmother has ordered Astrin to be killed because of Manon killing some of the other witches and Astrin has been beaten overnight by some of the other witches and she's been brought out to be executed and all of the witches line up that want to basically take part in the execution and it's basically everyone in the Yellow Legs clan. Manon makes a request to kill Astrin so that they can't do that because it would be a long painful death if it was that way. So she makes a request as wing leader to decapitate Astrin. She is getting ready to do it and she's like looking at Astrin. She looks at her third which is Sorrel um, and then all of a sudden she says run and she brings the blade down on her grandmother. Yes. And from that point on like I'm sorry I just couldn't stop. I had to read the rest of those chapters about Manon and the 13 and the fight with her grandmother. I was like oh my god. <laughs> I am so invested in Manon's story and Astrid's story. I'm really, really enjoying their POV. I probably should have recorded last night, but like, it was late at night and I was really hyper over it. So <laughs> I thought I'd wait till today to talk about it. But I'm really enjoying their POV. I find it so exciting. Like the whole scene where she's fighting her grandmother was so intense. And then obviously she does manage to escape and so all of the 13 have made it out of there. Um, but we also find out that apparently 
she is one of the crocken witches like her father was a crocken witch and so actually she's the crocken queen apparently and the witch that she was forced to kill by her grandmother when we first like get introduced to Manon was her half sister and her grandmother killed her parents and is just an absolute cow <laughs> I really hate her grandmother. Unfortunately, I don't think she managed to kill her grandmother, um, which I really was hoping was going to be the case. On to Tower of Dawn now. We're back to Kale's perspective, which is <sighs> putting me to sleep, if I'm honest. <laughs> but I'm, I'm behind on this now, so I need to catch up to where I should be before I go back to Empire of Storms. I've just read the last chapter of Tower of Dawn before we do the massive section of chapters in Empire of Storms and typically as soon as I'm about to stop reading this book it just got interesting. <laughs> um, so Nezrin and the prince whose name I cannot remember <laughs> have gone to one of the old fair towers um, got past all the traps in there, got down into the bottom of it and there is one of the giant spiders that have come from the same realm as the Valg we have now found out and it attacks them and this wolf shows up and starts attacking the spider and then the rook which is like the giant flying bird um, that they can ride um, also it helps attack the spider after the spider comes out of the tower chasing them uh, and it kills the spider. The wolf turns out to be Falcon, who I believe is the trader that turned up at the mountains. And he's a shapeshifter, and that's what we've just found out. And I'm about to stop reading Tower of Dawn, and my battery is flashing. So this will be my last update tonight. I'm going to go to sleep, and I will continue tomorrow with Empire of Storms. Hello. I have updates. I've been reading, but I've been like reading on an evening, so I haven't really been vlogging it. And I have lots to talk about. Uh, I have made some notes on my phone about the points that I wanted to mention. I've read quite a bit since I think I last updated you. So the first item on my list <laughs> is Manon and Dorian. Hello. <laughs> um, the bit in the ship, they're on the ship and Manon is shackled to the bed and Dorian is being a rather cheeky guy <laughs> while Manon is shackled to the bed. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> I thoroughly enjoyed these interactions. <laughs> I absolutely love Manon. I'm obsessed with Manon. Um, the scenes between Dorian and Manon are like the best thing ever. Honestly, like, I thought Dorian was so boring at the start of this series. I was like, ugh, he's so vanilla, he's so boring. And now he's like, kinky Dorian, and I love it. <laughs> there was that bit where he kind of teased her and nothing happened, and then he left, which was, like, amazing. Um, and then we had fake Fenris, is my note. Fake Fenris. Dorian has tried to convince them to unshackle Manon and convince them that she's not a threat uh, and so they've gone down there to unshackle her and Fenris is with them and he, they enter the room and Manon's like that's not Fenris I was like what what do you mean that's not Fenris and then it turns out it's um is it one of the Ilkin the one that has previously attacked Manon and is trying to track her down it turns out she is like disguised as Fenris and Manon is the only person that noticed <laughs> Fenris is offended of course <laughs> they couldn't tell the difference um and yeah and then the battle ensues uh, that whole section, that whole scene was like so exciting. I really enjoyed it, it was amazing. What's my next note? Kale and Irene. 
I liked Kale at the start of the series, and then there's been a long period where I'm like, I hate Kale, I'm not interested in Kale. About 60% of Tower of Dawn, I was so bored. I was like, I don't care about Kale, I don't care about his recovery, I'm not interested in this. But I don't know, like, the relationship between Irene and Kale is like, it's kind of good. <laughs> so Kale is like slowly slowly crawling back up <laughs> slowly crawling back up we'll never fully be back to where he was but I am enjoying Kale and Irene but I feel like that is mostly because of Irene not Kale <laughs> um, but yes the whole Kale and Irene thing is like really freaking cute he's like almost fully healed now he can walk now um, and they have a little venture in the bedroom and I also enjoyed that part <laughs> and then we have Larkin and a lead. I am loving all these couples. Like, yes, give it to me. Like, oh, seriously, every couple is like perfect perfection. Um, Larkin and a lead. Ooh, I love Larkin and a lead. I love it. I love it. Um, oh my gosh, it's so cute. Like when a lead was like, you will have a home. Basically, she said to Larkin, like, you will always have a place where I live, kind of thing, and you are always welcome. And he's like. She's, she's melting him, she's breaking him down. So cute. And then, that is the end of my notes, but I have read further. I have recently read the part where they are in the marshes and they're trying to find the lock. And it's Dorian, Manon, Aelin, Rowan, uh, Gabriel, and Fenris. Lorcan and Elide are trying to reach them, they're trying to get to them, and they're on the way to them but they're not quite there yet and they see the swarm of Ilkin come in to attack and he sends out his magic to warn them so they get the warning and they prepare a trap. Rowan goes and has a look and he comes back and says there's like 500 Ilkin flying towards us. Yeah, Aelin basically kills them all because it's like pff, she's amazing. <laughs> but in the process Lorcan and Elide are right in the firing line. So Lorcan defends Elide, um, uses his magic to shield them, while Aelin is just like blasting the shit out of everyone. Uh, and then they do survive that, but then the second that is over, Fenris and Gabrielle, who have been ordered by Maeve to kill, I just remembered something else which I will get to, she's ordered them to kill so many names, <laughs> to kill Lorcan, they suddenly turn up to kill him because, you know, they can't stop themselves because they're controlled by her. It's like an oath. Um, and Elide jumps in front and gets bitten by whichever one is the wolf. I don't remember. Um, but then I was reading Tower of Dawn and I was getting a little bit carried away because Tower of Dawn suddenly got very interesting. Um, so I kind of read more chapters than I should have because I'm doing the tandem read. Um, but I think after like the 60% point, Tower of Dawn finally got interesting and I was like, okay okay Nezrin is with Sartak is it Sartak she's with the prince one of the princes they're out on the rook and they see a baby rook and they go to try and save it and they end up it's a trap set by the spiders that I cannot remember the name of the Valg spiders and they get captured that whole bit oh my gosh Sartak tells her that like he loved her from the second he heard the stories about her like not even when he first met her not even when he first saw her he loved her from hearing the stories about her I was just like so cute and then he gets ripped away by the spiders and I was like no <laughs> no this is not happening um, and then she gets this story out of one of the spiders <laughs> and Maeve is not fair. Maeve is a Valg queen. A Valg queen. <laughs> I'm like reading my book and I was sat next to Andy on the sofa and I read that bit where it says that she is a Valg queen and I literally went, what? <laughs> and Andy's like, what? And I'm like, no, <laughs> no it is. <laughs> oh my God, it's so good, it's so good. Oh, like the plot twists in this book it just keeps getting better and better i'm like all right this is the bad guy oh no wait there's a bigger bad guy oh no wait there's a bigger bigger bad guy um and then it's like you think everyone's like top dog don't you like everyone's top dog everyone is the bad guy nah -uh. Maeve is the big bad oh my gosh it's so good 
I don't have much left. I think I have about 20% left of each book now. And then I'm on to the final book. And I'm so scared. Honestly, like, I'm going to say it now. I cannot cope if anything happens to Manon or Abraxos. I'll lose my shit. <laughs> I really don't want anything to happen to either of them. Oh, that was another thing. Abraxos. She sends Abraxos away. <laughs> she sends Abraxos away. And I... I was crying. <laughs> I was like, no, you can't send him away. And yeah, he's not returned yet, and I'm slightly concerned. I'm hoping that's because he's like gone looking for the rest of the 13 or something, and he's going to bring them all back. That's what I would like it to be. Um, if it's not that and something has happened to a Braxos, I am not going to be happy. Anyway, that is my update. <laughs> I will probably update you again once I get towards the end of the books, or potentially even have finished them. This is it, guys. It's the final moments. I am on the home run. I have now got to read Empire of Storms right up until the end, and then I will be switching to Tower of Dawn and reading that right up until the end of the book now. I am very excited. Uh, I just read a chapter in Empire of Storms before I started filming. The Battle on the Seas is currently in progress and the 13 have just turned up with a Braxos. Yay. What did I not talk about from previously? Manon and Aelin, they found the lock, which wasn't actually a lock, it was a mirror, and they stepped through the mirror after Dorian figured out the riddle, and they went and saw all the memories uh, and basically found out that either Dorian or Aelin has to die to return the Volg which is fabulous. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not I'm not sure how I feel about that. I have a horrible, horrible feeling it's going to be Dorian, even though they've said Aelin is the chosen one. Um, I, I have a horrible feeling and I don't think I'm going to be happy, <laughs> but I think that's probably going to happen in the next book. And I'm going to carry on reading Empire of Storms now and I will check in with you in a bit. I'm on the last bit of Tower of Dawn. I finished Empire of Storms yesterday. Uh, not sure how I feel about that end. <laughs> uh, but we're going to finish the rest of Tower of Dawn today. And that will be the end of this vlog. So we'll have a little catch up after I have read some more of this. The Kagan's youngest daughter died and it was supposedly suicide. Um, but it turns out she was murdered by Duva, who is pregnant, who we haven't seen much of. She has the Valg in her and she's been like staying out of the way so that no one notices. But apparently um, the princess noticed and that's why she killed her. And the reason Irene's mother was killed is because er when Erewhon returned, he tried to kill off all the healers in the north um but irene obviously escaped um and so that's why the valg are here they're here for irene she just said that irene is more useful to everyone alive <laughs> what does that mean Sartak has just told Nezrin that he told his father that he loves her and his father said that she's common born a would-be heir of the Kaganese who went to a princess or a lady someone with lands and alliances to offer 
and he told his father that if that was what it took to be chosen as the heir, he didn't want it and he walked out. And then his father appointed him the heir. I love all the couples that are now, like, I just love all the couples. finished. I was so bored in like the first half of this book but the second half of it was so good. I don't know how to rate this one. Yeah I am terrified to continue on with this series. I'm so excited but I'm also terrified like I am dreading this last book. As it stands I think everyone's about to converge together in the next book. Minus Aileen. Kayla and Irene got married. Oh. I love it and I hate it. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video guys. If you did, as always, please give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I will see you next time.